Today, dear friends, we celebrate the Mass of the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you, dear friends in Christ. As we come before the Lord today, we give him praise and thanks. In the Gospel today, the Lord reminds us to prepare for his coming in glory. We join in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, remembering that message. Let us recall our own unworthiness before God. Lord Jesus, you call us all to serve your Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you call us to be your holy people. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you lead us to the joy of eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. <clears throat> We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, <clears throat> the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy you, the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days I, Daniel, heard the word of the Lord saying, At that time there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people. It shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time your people shall escape everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever. Others shall be an everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament. And those who lead the many to justice shall be like stars forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. O Lord, my allotted portion in my cup, you it is who hold fast my life. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand, forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. 
reading from the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily at his ministry, uttering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this time, he offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. <clears throat> when its branches become tender and sprout leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gates. And may I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, a few weeks ago, in one of the children's religion classes, the teacher brought her class to church and asked me to show them the different things that we have in this beautiful church. First and foremost, of course, was the tabernacle, reserved with Holy Communion, the living presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is always the center of the church. And then we have all of the other things that we see so beautifully displayed here. We see the mosaic of the Lord ascending into heaven, with his arms outstretched as he calls us to himself. To each side of the altar we see the statues of our Blessed Mother Mary and of Saint Joseph, the two people who were closest to Jesus on the earth. And then elsewhere in the church we see the shrine to our holy patroness Saint Teresa, and the shrine to good Saint Anthony of Padua, and the other pictures of the saints that grace our church. But what the children notice the most, of course, is the beautiful stained glass windows, which I have spoken about many times before. They are masterpieces, works of art, and works of great devotion. For centuries, stained glass windows have been 
the way that the church has taught the truths of faith, taught the Old Testament and the New Testament. Even people who could not read could look at the beautiful windows and see, as we have in this church, the story of creation, the story of Moses, the story of our Lord's miracles, the story of his crucifixion and resurrection, all the things that grace our church. But there is one window that many of the youngsters point to, and it is the last window in the church. It reflects the gospel that we have just heard today. It tells of the Lord Jesus, our Savior, our loving Lord, coming in glory at the end of time. It is the window that reflects the Lord Jesus coming to judge all the creation, coming to destroy sin and death itself, and to give us, as the scripture says, a new heaven and a new earth. We do well to think about that window and to remember its message that the Lord will come one day in glory to bring us all home, home to eternal life. We all know, dear friends, <clears throat> that this world of ours is not what the Lord wants it to be. We see so much that is evil, too much that the Lord sees in his own creation and that we see too. We see violence, we see war, we see much hatred and division. We see too much selfishness and greed. But to put things simply, we see too much sin. God did not make sin. People did. As one child said to me one day, God does not make junk, and sin is junk. But the day will come when the Lord will destroy all that is wrong. He will destroy sin itself. The Bible uses the image that he will burn things up. When the Lord comes again, he will burn up all sin. He will burn up even death itself. And the scripture tells us today that we must be ready because we know not the day nor the hour when the Lord will come to end sin and to end death. We do not know when that glorious day will come. Today, Tomorrow, a thousand years from now, but it will come. And we must be ready for its coming. Ready to welcome the Lord on his day of glory. But how do we get ready? Ready for the Lord's coming in glory. If it happened right now. There is a story about our late Pope St. John the 23rd, good Pope John, as he was called, who touched the world with his simplicity and goodness. Someone asked Pope John one day what we should do to prepare for the Lord's coming in glory, to prepare for the day that that window in church represents. And Pope John read a very simple way of putting things said just two words, keep busy, keep busy. And he meant this, if the Lord would return right now, we should be doing, busy doing the things that we are always doing. We should be busy praying, opening our hearts to the Lord and loving him. We should be busy obeying the commandments, not cutting corners, not making excuses. 
We should be busy, as he has told us, loving our neighbor, going out of our way to help those in need. Of course, those who need material things, as you good people do in so many ways here in church. But beyond that, helping those who have troubles in their personal life or in their family. Helping those who are alone, particularly those who are homebound. Trying to help our children and our grandchildren to follow the right path of life. These are the things that we must be busy about today and tomorrow and every day until the Lord comes in glory. We must be busy about the right things. Sometimes <clears throat> when children talk with me about coming to Sunday Mass, I hear this, Father, I wanted to come to Mass but we were just too busy. How sad to hear that. Yes, we are all busy. Busy about work, busy about taking care of responsibilities, busy about making a living for ourselves and our families. But we must not let our busyness get in the way of our doing what the Lord wants us to do. As someone has said, we must never be too busy for God because God is never too busy for us. May we all be busy about the right things, about God's things. And when the Lord returns in glory, may he find us keeping busy and may he then say to us, Well done, my good and faithful servants. Now come and share my joy forever. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. <clears throat> he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son for with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, O has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, Standing in God's holy presence, we present our needs before him, saying after each of them, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Timothy Cardinal Dole, and all the leaders of the church, that they will help us to continue to grow in faith and holiness 
as we prepare for the Lord's coming, we pray to the Lord. That as we hear today in the gospel of the Lord's returning in glory, we pray that we will always be ready for his coming by leading lives of faithful service, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> that as we observe today the world day of the poor, we will be thankful for the blessings that we share with those in need through our own parish and through our archdiocesan services, we pray to the Lord. That during this time of the Eucharistic renewal, we will grow in our love and appreciation of the Holy Eucharist, our Lord's greatest gift to us, his people, we pray to the Lord. The blessing of peace, particularly at this time in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, that our Blessed Mother Queen of Peace will bring peace to those who suffer from war and civil strife, we pray to the Lord. For our American servicemen and women serving throughout the world, particularly members of our parish, that they will be protected in safety, we pray to the Lord. For doctors, nurses, EMTs, and healthcare professionals, police officers, and firefighters, that the Lord will continue to bless them in their service of us all, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, and for our beloved dead, especially the departed members of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Let us offer our own prayer in silence. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people. Guide and protect us in our journey of life. And one day we are safely home to your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled him 
himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so we join with all the angels and the saints to praise you. This without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus now comes to this altar to change bread and wine into his body and blood. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, <clears throat> he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word. My soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. We invite you now to welcome our Lord in spiritual holy communion to your heart. Before we come to the final prayer and the blessing, we give thanks to God that we have joined in the holy sacrifice of the Mass today. Let me again remind you that during this month of all souls, we pray for the souls in purgatory, that they will be delivered into the kingdom of heaven. Let us put them in the care of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, my women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this holy gift, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
And may Almighty God bless them. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.